Why, hello there. It's me, Jeremy, your favorite bald dude telling you about Standard and Strange, a store and a brand with simple rules. Sell clothes they themselves would wear, manufacture it ethically, and build it to last. From boots made in Oregon to loop wheel garments made in Japan, find all the best clothes for your wardrobe at Standard and Strange. Standardandstrange.com. Hello, we all have a good week. We looking for some fun today. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. <laughs> we have entered this era that I'm calling uh, the amalgamation of everything, right? Every brand of clothing is great. Every look is cool. This is more than an acceptance wake up call for each other. It's just this kind of, if you dress with your own joy, you are now cool. I, I truly mean this. Hear me out for a moment. You can embrace anything sartorially, and I will believe you and respect you. I don't care if, you, if you're no socks with your loafers, or I only wear socks, or I never show my ankle. I don't really care. If that's how you want to dress, and that is, and, and you dress that way with like a conviction, and you're happy in it, like, you are cool. And, and I, I think, you know, a brand that really has embodied this in just their their essence and their production and their mindset is a brand that we're talking about this week, Older Brother. In their words, by the way, this is them saying it, they are fashion celebrating the quirky singularity of life. Nice, right? And uh, also in their words, nature defines our color chart. So they make universal garments. There's, you know, they're equally tailored to fit men and women and people, everything. And everything they make is a vibe, right? Like that's an air quote word that I just said. Duh. Uh, like I swear to God, though, if Patagonia was started in 2022, this would be it. It's this. It's crunchy. It's beautiful. You got the natural dyed. Uh, I would say their brand and ethos is much bigger than any individual product that they make, right? Because when you think about some brands, you really associate the product over the brand or their branding. And this is like, it's just their whole attitude, right? It's, it's really beautiful. So I'm joined by their co-founder this week, uh, Max Kingery. This week, uh, you know, we, we get nostalgic over the 90s as we talk about growing up. Uh, you know, Max grew up in the, in the angst or the angst of the Pacific Northwest and landing in the skate culture of California. He tells us how he got to start in design. He was a gun for hire for a long time for a ton of different brands and how everything he was exposed to helped shape what became Older Brother. Uh, last but not least, we talk about California native plants and the cool, beautiful, simple happenstance events that inspired previous collections. This is a ton of fun. Max is an incredible guy. So let's go ahead and jump in. Yeah. And by the way, uh, I'm Jeremy Kirkland. You're listening to Blamo. Here we go. I've been listening and catching up on a couple episodes and it's, this is like a podcast coming to life because you have a very friendly and familiar voice on a podcast. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to it. I was like, this is very pleasant. It's, it's like the, you have a perfect voice for this. Platform. Wow. I, I enjoy it. Thank you. That's, that's very kind of you. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm a failed musician, so I, I figured it, and I can't, no one wants to hear me sing anymore. I just might as well talk. Uh, okay. Well, I quite <laughs> enjoy your voice and uh, that being like one of my most annoying things. I, I have some male version of vocal fry, probably from like smoking cigarettes at too young of an age. So for me, listening to my voice is like nails on a chalkboard, but uh, yours, uh, it's like, it's just, per it's very soothing and, and just friendly and, and familiar. I was listening. I was like, wow. Wow, I feel like I know this guy. Yeah, it's good. Man, I'm, <laughs> I'm gassed up before we even jump in. Wow. <laughs> I, I just, I, I felt obligated to say that because I was like, ah, this has got kind of a great voice for podcasting. Thanks. It's funny you mentioned vocal fry because mm -hmm. I feel like that, that's a very, um, I'm familiar with audio mm -hmm. term mm -hmm. <laughs> where like, I remember I had someone on once, I don't know when, it was a long time ago, but they did that yeah. a lot. Like that, that was their, their ums and aw, right. you know? Right. And my editor and I were just like losing our shit. Right. Over it. We're just like, I, how do we do this? And, and in some cases, like if you're recording with someone, you might be able to like 
hey, oh, I hear a, a fan back there or uh, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can give someone some like helpful feedback to create a better environment for them. Right. But correcting them on their speech or their diction, yeah. <laughs> you know, the cadence yeah. of the words, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's it's a recipe for disaster. Right. So uh, <laughs> anyway, well, Max, thank you for making the time to chat with me. Absolutely. It's, this has been, a, this has been a, a work in progress for... For a long time, I know. I know what Kristen was was trying to link us up. And yeah, was all over the map. Yeah. Oh, well, it's it's been a real uh, rodeo ride uh, the last couple months and in between. And it's it's funny how sometimes you know the stars align, um, and I think the timing is really good because we just you know kind of birthed yeah. a new collection. So it's like there's a whole kind of new wave of stuff going on that's it, it, more invigorating. And as of like a month ago, it was like, ah, oh, the season's never going to end. I'm so done with it. You know, it's it's a, it's good time. You said I'm so I done think. with it. Is that I'm I'm always curious because I feel like anyone who works in design or even specifically clothing design, there is a machine that they have to tango with like in order to continue existing. Mm-hmm. And I'm always curious how that, that grates on people because I mean, we'll, we'll jump into your, to your larger story and stuff, but the fact that you'd kind of led with mm-hmm. that, it's, I, uh, I do not envy the position that you're in, in terms of, mm-hmm. it feels like everyone has to shout their story these days. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's challenging. Cause you, you know, you have, Everyone is is served such amazing top tier creation and content and con- mm-hmm. and concepts. It's like drinking <laughs> from a fire hose, you know. That you know, it's so the idea that I mean, either you speak up or you know, you're basically working into a vacuum because there's just so much for good or for bad. You know, sometimes I have I have a mixed feeling about that where I'm just like, wow. I mean, the way that people consume inf- information now, you know, like I said, it's just drinking right. from a fire hose. I mean, there's just this, this, this gushing, all this amazing stuff that people are doing. And it's served in such short duration and kind of like low context. It's just like, oh, beautiful images, beautiful <laughs> images, you know, so keep going, keep going, keep going. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of that. And it, it can be, um, it's, it's hard. And that can definitely, that's definitely one of my deficits. It's, it can get really hard and you're like, whoa, you know, you're doing, doing some things that are, uh, that the intention is Mm -hmm. very complicated. And so to take a step back and be like, Hey, you know, you got to explain this from, you know, kind of from a ground level. It's like, ah, okay. Like it's, it can be really hard. I also think it, you know, and I have a few friends who are designers and, you know, they're in the or they've been in the industry for a long time. And I think sometimes you get into a bit of a bubble and you forget that a lot of the people that are, that are experiencing your brand, they're totally new to it. And even though they have an understanding of clothes or some brand or some reference point, they're, it's still so new to them that, you know, I mean, there's a reason why like denim brands never ever go away because the like the utility of denim is still it's something that never goes, it's like, it's like the coffee of clothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're, you're always getting right. it. Right. <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, and it's that nuanced as well too. Cause I mean, it's been the same, you know, five yeah, exactly. pocket jean for, you know, I mean, I could probably put on my historical cap here and think, but yeah, I mean, from the, the 501 silver screen days to now, but it's like, it's that nuance too, where it's like people, you have the opportunity to explain where the denim's from, how it's how it's woven, how the yarn is dyed, and how the, the denim was my uh, genesis in the industry. So that's a good starting point for me. Like I, I got way into the nuances of denim, and it's and it is reminiscent of coffee, especially now because people, I mean. People right. care. You like go to a barista and it's like, whoa, hold on. Like the, t- the timer started and like this whole ceremony is occurring and you're like, oh yeah, okay. Well, this is, this is part of the experience, Well, what, you know? So that's yeah, well, well, let's, let's jump back a little bit. So like, True. where are you from originally? Portland. Portland, Portland Oregon. Oh man. Yeah. Through and through. Yeah. 
And what was what was life well, like out there? You know, I, I was born and um, spent a good portion of my life like growing up in Portland and then kind of starting to go down the coast. But uh, Portland was um, was all I knew. I mean, it was it, it was beautiful. Um, I always kind of, you know, growing up, I'm, I'm about 34. So as I kind of came to age, it was like, you know, right in that like pinnacle Pacific Northwest, like just after the grunge period. Goonies era. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go, like Goonies to grunge. You know what I mean? Like that, all of that was like percolating. Okay. And so it, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely a time where the cliche, the ongoing cliches of Portland were abundant now and fun. And like, as a young person, uh, it left a huge impression on me. So I'm grateful for the, you know, early mid nineties experience in Portland as a kid. Cause it, it stamped a lot of that into me. Did you have like <laughs> a, a bicycle with like a steel basket on the front? Uh, not you're going full Goonies. Yeah. <laughs> and I can say, I, and to that, I respect, I respect anyone who's a deep enthusiast, uh, deeply enthusiastic about the Goonies. <laughs> not so much my case. Okay. It was more like, you know, there was definitely the bike, but it was like going down to 23rd Street and looking at, um, you know, airwalk uh, sneakers coming in and, uh, you know, big whale corduroy oh, yeah. flannel shirt. I mean, I, I just like steeped in that, you know, along with along with kind of the 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 angst, the inexplicable angst of the Pacific Northwest with with a dash of. Um, you know, kind of, uh, Tiva sandals, you know, both like <laughs> with socks. Were, yeah. With socks. Oh, absolutely. For it's cold. Yeah. It's cold. No, it's, true. it's different. Right? But I, I remember like going to, uh, going to get coffee with my, not that I was drinking coffee because I was so young, but I remember going down to coffee people on 23rd street in Portland in like 1994. And that is like, that is burned. Mud honey's brain. on the stereo. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. For sh- yes, yes. So you, I mean, I'll let you fill in the blanks because I can only explain it in like a, like a visceral experience of going like, wow, okay, this is a lot, you know, in that environment. It's like pinnacle. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm I mean, grateful it's, it's funny. Well, yeah. I mean, cause like that era is really in hindsight is really romanticized. Right. Totally. Like, and but at the time too, you know, and I've talked to, you know, a few other people who were kind of like living through this at those times where you have, you know, that's like early Nirvana, that's like sub pop, you know, and I know that's Seattle, but just like that whole vibe is kind of like smashed together. You got Twin Peaks, you got all these things in there. And there is just this like, it was the first time when self-discovery of like the youth was more out in the open and mm. not taboo. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that has really become like nostalgic for many people, especially as designers now when they look at like reference points right. of like adulthood. Right. I mean, you mentioned airwalks. Was that was that where you started to like realize that your clothing could kind of set you apart or set you in somebody? Yeah. I mean, I, I think um it's funny you mentioned that. Or it's funny you drill down on that because it's like, yeah, those are just things in those environments and interacting with that, it, it was kind of like, those are the things I started to distill and be like, man, Airwalk shoes are very cool. <laughs> like, uh, you know, and that, that's, that, that becomes like, you know, ingrained. And then the, that perception of paying attention to detail, paying attention to the crossover with the culture, more or less, which parlayed right. into skateboarding, which parlayed into, you know, uh, uh, I don't like the word, but it's a truth is consumerism, you know, and with that consumerism comes a culture that that is around and that, you know, those concepts were, that's how, it, how it started, you mm-hmm. know, it was really going in there and be like, wow, okay. Like I, the airwalk shoes and corduroy pants w- were very meaningful to me at that time in my life. And that was consistent, you know, uh, into the, in the future. Did you, did you get your pair at that time? It, I got the court. And, okay. I, and I did have a pair of Airwalks, but I was late to the game. Me too. Not going to lie. I, I saved and slaved. I had, I had cross colors shoes that, that, you know, my buddy roasted me on. And then I got a pair of simples because I was like, man, you're, you guys are clowns. I'm wearing simple. <laughs> right. And that was the next wave. 
Because the, sim- yeah. the simple, I think, is like probably another pinnacle piece of footwear in that realm. So, yeah, yeah I mean, my timing was was to you know it's too young so it was, and and that's also been kind of the story of my my life too where it's like timing is you know some people are you know just you know they they have it but at, those things were still meaningful but i don't think i ever had i don't think i ever had the 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 timing especially because it was like you know nine years old at the time <laughs> but that's everybody thinks that their timing was wrong right who who is right. someone that you could think of that the timing is perfect I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, even even the person that someone would use as an example, right? Like, I mean, people I right. like James Dean and all this stuff. First mm-hmm. off, homie died at an incredibly early age, so it's all <laughs> right. you only yeah. have a micro window of that person. But it's just right. like at their peak. Yeah, it's you know the, I, the timing stuff is no no one will ever be happy with the era they were born in. <laughs> right. Well, you know, and sadly put too, it's, it's like sometimes it's like but most importantly it can just be the appreciation of those things as a perspective right. you know taking an ownership of it is a different thing you know what i mean and that's like you know i, I think it was more it was more so about just like the you know the the study or like the 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 observation of those things were the most meaningful right you know, actually having them was like a double edged sword maybe yeah so you're you got your kicks you're you're living mm-hmm. in the pacific northwest and, mm-hmm. you know, how do things evolve from there? Did you, did you go to school up there too? Yeah. Uh, I went to school in Portland until, uh, I think we left Portland when I was in fourth grade and okay. then moved to the Bay Area. Oh, okay. Um, and that's, that's where a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things um, came online for me in that sense, where it's like, you know, going to public school in California, like things that's where a lot started to happen too. And that's, um, so yeah, you know, the click part happened in Portland for sure, you know, and then as I grew up moving to California, um, that was, that was kind of one of my experiences in a young adulthood started. And that was like pretty, um, pretty wild. I, you know, I, I started skating and got into that culture and then basically just became uh, a derelict for a period of time. So that was kind of steeped in there as well. But there was always that like ongoing thing about, you know, that click that happens when you're going like, okay, well, these are the things that at one point in time were were meaningful Mm. for me was that kind of observation of culture, um, you know, which metaphor would, and I'll take a step back to, you know, growing up, um, my mom was a uh, was a practicing artist and then also like continually going back to school and eventually teaching art so she was a huge i got a massive dose of creativity from my mom mm. um and i think that that was something that kind of like uh, at a certain point i think when i when i moved down to california it's like becoming a like a young teenager adult like that that period of my life was just all um, uh, just kind of a wild and crazy time and like acting out. And that, that was a, that was a long period of time, but I had gotten that initial dose of like growing up in the Pacific Northwest and my mom who was like really active in the art community there. Mm -hmm. So I got, I had like, I just got a lot of impression and in my teenage years, I mean, that basically was paused for a long period of time like it was it went from <laughs> they went from skating to just partying and partying and and experimental things of that nature and then you know as i got a little bit older um you know and that had kind of run its course in a in a very negative way in my life as a, as i was kind of coming older and actually a young adult i had that initial experience um you know in the pacific northwest you know, it's just kind of that urge to figure out a channel for creative expression that kind of clicked back. And that's where I, um, you know, I think by in 2007, I moved down to LA. Mm. Everyone that all my close friends in the Bay Area were kind of south flying birds. So everyone was southbound. Um, so I had been coming down to visit and hang out in the weekend and couch surf. And just so I was like, okay, well, this is where I'm, I'm just going to go to LA. And so I'd come down uh, around 2007 and I basically, I had done a, a semester at um, the Academy of Art in San Francisco, yeah. Uh, yeah, which was, 
I have mixed feelings about it. Like it felt, it felt kind of like a rack, a racket and it was really expensive. But then there was also some experiences where it was like, it was also a really intensive program that I saw a lot of people excel in. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me in those type of environments, like, I, you know, I never did well in school at all. You know, I'm just, I'm very hands-on learner and I've got to do things and like, a, I got to just kind of jump into it. So, I, you know, that academic environment, like it just never really clicked for me. So by the time I, I had come to LA, um, you know, I was looking for opportunities and it was like working like strange retail jobs. And that was like, you know, not, wouldn't consider those to be fun experiences at all. Um, <laughs> But one day I was um, I was walking into American Rag on La Brea, oh, and, yeah. I, and I walked into the back, and I got uh, connected um, with a guy named Carl Turnerson mm-hmm. of Rogue Territory. Uh, are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah, very yeah. familiar. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I walked in when he was uh, tailoring jeans at American Rack. He was custom making jeans before Rogue Territory started. So I came in and I saw what was going on in the back, and I was like, "Can I have a job? I'll do whatever you want me to do." And so I I got um, circumstantially I I got uh, involved in that, and from there he started a brand, and I got a crash course in. The peak days of artisanal denim, you know, the oh, yeah. and the glory of what that is. Yeah. I mean, we're talking, yeah. uh, it was deep. I mean, that was, that was 2009, yeah, 2008, nine and 10. So right at the, you know, put your stinky jeans in the freezer to before you <laughs> wash them, you know, just, uh, just the fanciest Japanese denim that, you know, that you could buy just yep. all that. And that, gotta, gotta have your boots, gotta have everything selvage. I, I was more Vans at that time. I didn't go, f- I, I couldn't do full like mustache barista, you know, like the full, the full thing of like the lumberjack. Yeah. The uh, heritage guy. He yeah. was like, it was like, uh, I, but, you know, uh, you know, aesthetic aside, it, that experience for me was so cool because it gave so much purpose and intent because it's like, Okay, everybody's sitting around making relatively the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's raw five pocket jeans, but it was how it was made, which was everything. You know, thinking about like that, that whole experience was really important to me because it went, oh, okay, you know, it's, it, it was starting to connect the dots about like process material. Uh, mm. and, and those details and just like, you know, um, that was really meaningful. Cause I was like, wow. Okay. I mean, I could, it was indigo for days, you know, <laughs> like that when, when it really, when the, indi- when the nuances of indigo came into play, it was like, okay, like I got, st- I got stuck on that. Uh, yeah. I, I and like, then okay. everything was, was dyed indigo that was sold and things that didn't need to be dyed indigo. I remember. I bought, here's a real clown. Mm-hmm. I bought a indigo dyed mouse pad. Respect. Was it leather? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, well, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it was like leather placed on top of, you know, okay. some thing. And okay. that was, okay. you know, and they were like, yeah, this is indigo dyed leather. And, you know, it's going to hey, patina man. as you use it. And I was like, what the fuck? It's, I'm literally just rubbing my hand across this thing, <laughs> just surfing just, the internet. Just, crocking your indigo all over your mouse and hand as you're using it too yeah because which it, would be hilarious because i'd have i'd have like a blue wrist or right. or in some cases like my my shirt cuff right right know, right, right, be, right 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 so right yeah so i i mean we're we're speaking the same language and we're we're yeah. we're at the same point in time where it's like yeah that that was big deal and from experience putting indigo on, on leathers uh, that's really difficult and 100 percent guaranteed to just uh transfer over everything because it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna adhere to the uh to the leather so that, well we're working awesome. 10 years ago man <laughs> yeah well i should have hit you hey, up i know i would have done the same thing you know what i mean I, I, it's like i i my hands were i all the the beds of my fingernails were like cracked and looked like i had like smurf hands for like four Hell years yeah. at that point in time so uh, you would have just been uh you know I, you would have been in good company for sure. That's funny. So how long were you at Rogue Territory? Three years. 
Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm so uh, so grateful to Carl for that experience because that was is perfect at that point in time for mm-hmm. me. Like it, it was just it was great. It was, it was everything. Um, it was uh, you know just learning about process, um, learning about you know how to make jeans. I mean. Pretty sure at that point in time, it, I was all new to Carl too. So it was basically mm-hmm. just like, okay, these are the next steps. And everything that unfolded afterwards proved to be really valuable experience for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that I'm grateful for. Uh, I don't, uh, unfortunately, both Carl and I don't have a, a lasting relationship from that experience because I was, you know, a 20 year old kid in a 300 square foot workspace, uh, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and, and now I know as, as a, as a business owner, like what he must've been going through at that time for me, it was, it was just great. You know what I mean? It was like, I, I was, uh, I was really enjoying the ride, but I wasn't the one responsible for running a business, which is, I wouldn't wish that on my own. Right. <laughs> well, where, where'd you go from there? Well, when that had ran its course, um, you know, and I think that, that for me, uh, you know, I, I think that. I was probably pretty difficult too. I think everyone's extremely difficult in their early twenties. Mm. Uh, so after that, uh, I think, you know, I just kind of, I had figured out, um, you know, kind of, an, uh, it was great because I had immediately gone into, you know, how things were made in LA and started to connect those dots of like, you know, how, um, you know, the different supply chain works and different how sewers work, sewing contractors worked. And mm. so I basically, at that point on, I, I just did, um, I just did gun for hire work, uh, for a long period of time. And so I was helping people, they'd be, you know, they'd come and they'd say, Oh, I have this collection. This is my sample set and da, da, da. And so it was like bird dogging. As like a pattern maker? No, I mean, as a, as a, uh, the, there's a term for it. I didn't know at the time when I was younger, but as a full package. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what, whatever that, whatever that was, I'd, I would come in and either that was, you know, facilitating with, uh, you know, whether it was design concepts, how things are made, pattern workers, all that stuff, which is um, uh, a terrible business, just <laughs> terrible. But man, you see, you, you see a, lot, a lot of hindsight of, of, of some of these some of these jobs just not being not being uh, not being highlights of your life. <laughs> well, no, I mean, they're all experiences and I'm grateful for them. You know, that's all it's all a cumulative experience I've, I've enjoyed sure. and I'm still doing it today and more or less, but I think just the reality was that like at that point in time was, you know, uh, managing production is, is really challenging. Mm -hmm. And then when you manage somebody else's production, it's challenging and you're the, the neck to squeeze, so to speak. Mm. So, you know, and you, and you learn, you know, you learn the hard way that, you know, that the supply chain, it, it, it fails um, and it, it will just fit like that's the that's the the starting point is it's like you go out and you're like, OK, this is what we're making and this is how it's going to be made and where it's going to be made and kind of have that that like groundwork. And then everything just kind of it's like controlled failure as it goes through the notion. <laughs> <It's really, laughs> that's what it can be like. So, but yeah, so that that was. um you know, I think at that point in time, that was just that that was kind of um, what I saw as an opportunity and means to make a living and, and participate mm-hmm. in the industry and, and was kind of just, you know, um, at a I'm young and um, was still accumulating experience and still kind of looking to uh, work with others um, mm-hmm. and just kind of so it, it was like um, it was uh, staying involved um, and it was it was it became uh, entrepreneurial, um, you know, and, and so that, that was kind of uh, what I did for the you know, four years, five mm. years after my timeline. It's weird. Ever, uh, ever since 2020, it's like timelines have started to be either really long or really short oh, yeah. or not, not adding up. So give or take. Um, and so that was, um, and that was also kind of like getting connected and figuring out with some people and, and like having some opportunities and, and sussing those things out. And meanwhile, you know, basically the, the stars were just kind of aligning for me to you know start older brother with those were the, the circumstances behind prior to starting older brother. Yeah. Cause I feel like older brother is like a very 
new company, but you guys aren't, I mean, you didn't just start yesterday, you know? I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a trip. Um, when I, when I think about like the timeline and stuff, I mean, I think, uh, older brother was, um, a little bit more than an idea in mm-hmm. 2014, mo- mostly 2015, you know, and it was, uh, that was kind of like in, um, in its conception stage. Um, and that's when I connected with my, uh, my former like partner and co-founder, um, Bobby. And mm-hmm. that was when, um, when older brothers started to be like an idea and then it became like, uh, I'm going to do this, you know, this is going to happen. What was the moment that, that made you realize, Oh, like I'm going to do this. Like, this is going to be where I put all my eggs. I think when we got done with the name game, the name game, the name game, go on. Um, the name game was like, Hey, okay. Like where, you know, not a whole thing was just kind of like fumbling around where it was like, okay, well, you know, like I, I've got, you know, a uh, compulsion to make things, you know, mm-hmm. it's obviously it's going to be closed. That's what I've spent my adult life pursuing. And so I think it was kind of like fumbling around and kind of like starting to play this exercise of like what the fundamentals of the brand were mm-hmm. and we knew, you know, that was a period in time when like the word sustainability was not just like slapped on everything and like kind of just like a buzzword that you could just uh-huh. insert you know, so it was, it was like a little more um, of a concerted like uh, effort and like philosophical thing from the from the ground up. So I think like kind of going through and going like, OK, well, like older brother and going through the exercise. And I remember the name didn't exist yet. And when I sat down and, and just started like whipping out names on a list, like boom, 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 boom. I fuck. I probably still have the Google document. I wish I could. I wish I could cite some of the other ones. And then um, older brother came up. And there wasn't necessarily a rhyme or reason to it, but it just, it just, it just stuck. I was like, wow. And I was like looking at and listening to it the next day, going through the list kind of, and then reading older brother and going, huh, okay, this works. It's a great name. Yeah. I, I don't know why, you know what I mean? More, more would come to it over the period of time of like, okay, what is that? I'm a younger brother. I'm not an older brother. You know what I mean? My relationship with my brother, I, I'm sure there's- You have an older brother. Right, right. And so uh, would I name a clothing, would I name my clothing brand after my relationship with my older brother? No. <laughs> I love him, but he's my brother. You know, it's like, but there was, there was more, there was more kind of building to it. And so it, once again, it became this like space to like mm-hmm. insert these ideas and to insert these intentions. And it kind of blossomed as the concepts of the brand. And most importantly, what what occurred was like early on was it's like, okay, gonna start a clothing brand, but there's gonna be a reason for it. Right. You know, right. and, and that, that at that period of time, it's like I've got um um I've more than experienced um, you know, working with natural dyes. And that has had equally grown into my, um, th- like, that's just the way that I wanted to make clothes for a multitude of reasons, right? Because A, you know, working in, in um, production uh, and spending time in commercial dye houses and stuff and being exposed to like silicone and like crazy caustic chemicals that yeah. are like, Meanwhile, I mean, they're like huge factories that are, you know, all this vapor is going into the air and you're talking, you know, like four blocks away from residential neighborhoods and stuff. Like it would be like a, you know, large, large scale production dye facility. And there's an p- apartment complex across the street and everyone in there is wearing ma- I mean, that stuff is so unregulated. And, and, and that whole experience was like, whoa, OK, like I'm I uh, had had a, like large scale exposure to chemicals at that point where I was like, I was noticing weird things that like I'd get copper taste in my mouth and it was, it was, it was like meaningful. And then I was like, you know, meanwhile, I'm like learning and doing experimenting with natural dyes. And that's like, whoa, because that whole experience was, I mean, you're, the creation, the process, it's much more hands-on. It's much, you know, it's like you're, it, it, it's a whole different design philosophy, 
rather than just like pick a Pantone and, you know, start balancing reactive dye colors. You right. know what I mean? It's a, the, the, you can order, you can order, um, you can pick a Pantone and you can buy, you know, a pre mixed color from one of the big labs in LA and you're off and cooking where this is like, Hey, let's try and make yellow. And it's like, you know, what the fuck is going to happen? Is it going to turn brown in the dryer? Is it stable? Does it, does the sun just burn off the color? You know, if it's washed, does it have like the, the way that the light interacts with the surface of the material? Like everything was just what way more deep, way more involved, a lot more intention to it. It was really hard and really frustrating. And it was like trial and error again and again and again. But so that was kind of like, okay, well, older brother is going to be the vehicle to do this. Right. That, that's it. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, these are the things I'm interested in. Older brother is going to be the vehicle to do this. And that's going to give the reason why. Why are we going to do that? Because we're going to go out and we're going to try and make beautiful things under this design philosophy of, you know, a lot of the word of the time, to- word of that time was wabi sabi and like the feeling of that. Which oh yeah. Nashville was like, mm, like it was the embodiment of that and that design principle and philosophy. And it was like, and cut no corners. You know what I mean? No plastic, no nothing. You know what I mean? Like really from the gate, like we want these things to have that same experience um, from, you know, from the, from the button to the zipper to, I, I think if I was brutally honest, I think there was about a year where we were using uh, recycled poly mailers and stuff like that, which was, you know, um, it was just early on, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, the industry has changed so much. Um, I remember starting older brother and people were like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Why, why are you dying clothes naturally? And granted, that's a great question, but at the same time to me, like I'm so set in my ways and so fascinated by it, like how that's unfolding that it was like, well, you know, like I didn't really think, but you know, like this is, it was a, it was an organic compulsion to be like, okay, can we make things this way? Yes. And okay. And with that, be that the guiding light forward of like, okay, I'm just going to push this as far as I can. Well, I think that's the thing. This episode is brought to you by Standard and Strange. Where are the summer fits at? Is it too hot? Look, you know, I've always been one of those less is more folks and I just tend to wear a bright color. Hello, yellow. But lately, I've been feeling the Joe McCoy pocket tees from Standard and Strange. They have a cherry red and a forest green, and wow, they are so good. Because it's hard to get pocket tees right. But these are 100% cotton, garment dyed, which means they're dyed after they're actually assembled, made, and they're made in Japan. Oh, and did I mention they're only available at Standard and Strange? Look, if you're still thinking... Just head over to standardandstrange.com and see why they're one of my favorite shops. Their selection of denim, boots, sportswear is incredible. And geez, what other retail store donates 2% of their revenue, not profits, to giving back? I love these folks. So should you. Visit standardandstrange.com to learn more. And be sure to sign up for their mailing list so you never miss the latest dope gear they have at standardandstrange.com. Okay, so you're ready for it. You're ready to get your watch. Whether you're celebrating a life event, you just want to flex, or you want to see some amazing watches, you got to visit my friends at Topper Jewelers. Located in the heart of Silicon Valley, California, Topper has the watch you want now, the grail watch for the future, and exclusive pieces you've never seen before. But right now, Topper has an exclusive box set edition of the incredible new Ultracron from Longines. By the way, this is how you revive a king. It has the original Longines high-frequency automatic caliber, an ultra-chronometer certification for accuracy. It's water-resistant to 300 meters, so you can do whatever your heart desires with it on. And did I mention the special box set is available in limited quantities exclusively at Topper Jewelers? So listen, get on over to their shop, or look, let's just be honest, visit them online if you want at topperjewelers.com. Check out the return of the Longines ultra Cron at topperjewelers.com. That's T-O-P-P-E-R jewelers.com.
You like watches? You like to talk about them? You like vinyl? You like vintage? You like vintage vinyl? You like video games? Look, they're all available on Whatnot and even more. Whatnot is a community marketplace that provides members with a safe place to meet online to share their collectible items to buy, sell, and more. It's a platform for collectors interested in buying and selling authentic collectible items of all kinds. Look, before I go crazy here, here's what I love about Whatnot. I get to actually have a relationship with the people I'm buying from. There's now a face to my purchases. And when you're getting watches like your boy, it's paramount. But there's more. This season, you can join me, your favorite bald dude, on Whatnot for our exclusive show and hang session all about watches. Click the link in the show notes to download the app to check it out. We'll learn about some of my favorite brands with some of the most notable people in the industry. We'll chat about watches and yes, even give away some incredible pieces in the process. So download the app on your app store or sign up online at whatnot.com to get started. Whatnot.com. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing. It's important, at least for me, to try to discuss and focus on because there are a lot of, I don't know, I, I feel like there are people that are trying to start these sort of, I'm air quoting this, like sustainable, natural, which is, I don't even know what the hell that word means anymore. But like now it's it's almost like this kind of fad to wear this kind of like gorpy farmhouse, blackbird spy plane reading, like mm-hmm. this is the, the, the cool guy. Mm-hmm. All my shit is natural. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all sustainable. You know, we only used a gallon of water total to make my outfit. Mm-hmm. And I think that's great. But you know, for me, the stuff that always sings true and more importantly lasts are, you know, brands that are designing with convictions versus right. designing with trend forecasts. <laughs> right. Yeah. And look, I, you know, I can be, I can get salty about that. But if I take, <laughs> if I take four steps back and I look at the landscape mm-hmm. of like what's available today, you know what I mean? I go, whoa, like the, there's been some fundamental shifts, you know what I mean? And when we take a few steps back, you know, not to get on the, the soapbox too much, but I mean, textiles are, I mean, we're, we're just a big industry with big effects and gnarly stuff happening on a, mm. just a draw dropping scale. So, you know, it's, and I look at it now and I'm going like, God damn, like people are like that interest has driven other brands to do, to make steps that who knows, you know what I mean? Like if it's a trend, that's sad. If, if we're actually literally talking about solving problems, then fuck it. I'm all over it. You know what I mean? Like there's a, there's yeah. a part of me that can play like, you know, like, who, like who's there first. And yeah, I mean, it's like some people just like, I mean, they'll literally use like, ethical sewing of natural clothes and i forget there's like a few other badges are like what do you mean like oh, we're, okay <laughs> like are you sure you know what i mean and and you know and then there's a lot of other people too where it's like the there's an aspect of it where it's like they're just gonna copy and, and paste these titles on there and i mean that's okay you know it's like it's like organic food at costco you know what i mean like it good enough costco is the largest uh, creator of air quotes organic food. You know what I mean? Interesting. Good, good or bad, we don't know. You know what I mean? I, right, I, right. I, I, I think it's a step in the right direction. You know, so I, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to embrace those things and go like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? And and yeah, and, and you know, and all that like aside, you know what I mean? Like whether like I, I will um, every once in a while, you know, thanks to you know the the way information travels, like I tune into these things. I'm like, what? I'm like, okay, all right, well. And, but then I just kind of return back to, it's like, I still have my roadmap of when we started Older Brother. And it's like, Mm -hmm. that's never changed. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's instilled. So it's like, do I ease off the language that feels like buzzy and communicating the brand? Sometimes. And it's funny because people, people like people will come out of the woodwork and start like asking us like questions about like sustainability and stuff. And sometimes I forget like uh, it, like, like we had mentioned earlier in the conversation where it's like, if you really don't explain it to people, they'll, they'll, they'll start, they'll start asking questions and you're like, oh shit, I thought this was just implied. Like we've been doing this from the beginning, you know? Yeah. And they don't, they, they don't know. Cause it does, it doesn't have like those, those kind of like perfect you know, like well-refined 
SEO search words that are stamped like throughout their their product. But hey, I, at the end of the day, it's like I, you know, if I was to get out of my own way and like leave my ego at the door, I, I I'm I'm gonna get behind it because at the end of the day, like I I think ultimately that all that stuff's going in a in a good direction, you know? Yeah, and I think it's you know uh, like brands like Forty Five RPM, mm-hmm. you know, have, have done for years. The, the sort of cool organic dye stuff. Um, a lot of it not organic, but you know, that that's in there. And then you, you know, cause I, at least for me, my first kind of foray or understanding of this stuff pre sustainability buzzwords w- was like around Visvim. Right. Like, I mean, and, and I feel like, you know, like the beetle dyed stuff right. and all the like cool, like terracotta stuff. And I think, you know, in a good way, when, when I first heard about you guys, like it, it, I had a reference point. Right. So I was like, oh, this is kind of like Visvim. This is kind of like this, which to be honest, like Visvim, love them or hate them, they're one of the greatest brands uh, ever. Yeah. You no. know, <laughs> agree. Right. And I think one of the things, someone pointed this out to me a while ago, and I really appreciate it too. It's like Visvim didn't just happen overnight. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, absolutely not. Right. Yeah. It's like the way it's served to us now, it's like, oh, this Japanese brand, Visvim. You know what I mean? It's like, no, no, no. Like that, I mean, that's a capital vision. I mean, get out of here. I mean, that's a, <laughs> I, in fact, when I look at, the, like, when I look at those things, I'm just like, oh, like, how do you, uh, you know what I mean? Like, when I see how some of that stuff's executed, I'm just like, Jesus. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so it's like, yeah, it comes from that. And well, and it, it helps too that, it, you know, and this is more mm-hmm. of the Japanese like commerce mindset is very much, about longevity and and not you know and I want to be careful with my words so I'm not trying to speak too much for them but it's not like VC backed we got to hit 8x multiplier this year it's like nope we're gonna let's just grow a very small amount and let's just kind of keep going and the staying power of that I think especially now like people you know you just love them and the fact that like they don't ever really change i mean that's actually one of the things i like about older brother is like there's you know and and it feels like maybe brands are doing this more in like the collection mindset Uh you know where like almost everything is kind of perennial right and there's a slight alteration with it versus well let's erase everything you did this you know the past six months and start from scratch yeah yeah, I'm, I think there's two points I would say. You know, and, and I'll say this too. Early on, I, f- I forgot too. It's, I got, um, I did get uh, introduced to some people that were really critical and and kind of indoct- indoctrinated me into those ways of creation. And, and one of them, I don't, know, I'd be surprised if you knew because it's it's kind of obscure and like kind of a more of a older female brand, but it's called Dosa. Have you heard of hmm. Dosa before? It used to have a store in New York, and it, I don't know necessarily in what capacity it functions now, but it's a, this amazing woman named Christina Kim, um, and she, she is just like the OG. And I remember doing, she brought me in, she's like, I want to know more about Indigo. Like, Oh my about God, me. I do know about this brand. Right. Yeah, right. I went to this shop. Holy, oh yeah. man. So- she was one of those people I get can that I had I had done like multiple studio visits and those kind of conversations with, and I mean her world in downtown LA was on the top of this like uh, one of the Broadway buildings or something, and she just has like this world there. I mean, it was like all the sewing was done in house, and you know it was just like every every uh, every. Uh, uh, like everything was just like, oh my god! Mm. She was one of the people I walked in. Um, like I've never, I've n- I haven't been to like Visvim HQ or even I've never even been to any of the capital stuff in Japan personally. Been to Visvim and a few of other ones, but that was the one I walked into Dosa and I was just like, my, I would go in there and just be like, oh my god, like this is this is really cool. It was all it was all happening right there. She's one of the first brands I walked in and I was like, wait, you have, she had like, t- like maybe f- like 40 or 50 operators working and like, wow. and I mean, uh, this is not my experience at all. We have a, our, we're doing that similar model because we're vertical in a lot of the mm-hmm. things we make now. But I mean, it was like, everything was like meticulously wrapped in like glassine packages, like 
oh, here's a sample from 2000 or like 2003. And it had like a, like a type, a uh, type letter face, uh, you know, craft paper that was like taped on with Japanese mm. washi tape. I mean, there's just, there was, just, there was no hole in that. Ma- it was like the matrix. There was like no glitch in that render of that experience where I was just like, whoa, this is wild. And she was the one who was like really, she's doing crazy, like, uh, they use uh, like different egg yolk in indigo to create this like sticky, shiny thing. It comes from a, this province in China. I was like, all that stuff. And I was just like, oh my God. Like that, when I walked in and I experienced all that, I went, oh, fuck. Okay. So, that, I mean, that's a good, that's a good, you know, point to make too, because I feel like for brands that have such a, incredible story but but have a lot more depth to them especially Mm. stuff that's really difficult to express on let's be honest just like instagram right where it's like (laughs) here's some great images where it's like no no no, like you need to understand our entire ethos and everything that we're doing like that's the thing because people talk about oh retail's dead retails are dead and it's like okay fine maybe it is but showrooms in my mind are like the most important thing ever because like when you experience the scent of a location you know, like what you were saying, the packaging, I mean, fuck, I am, you give me nice packaging, you're the greatest brand of all time. <laughs> and I get that it might be a waste or whatever it is, but it there's, have to there be. are ways, exactly. Yeah, like there are ways be. around creating such a optimal experience that it, it you know. This is like visceral. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, I, and you know, that is like, yeah, those have been like very, very meaningful to me personally, because yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like I, I don't buy anything online at all. Like I really out don't. of because you're not interested, or no? Nah, I mean, just uh, I mean, like now it's like uh, you kind of have to now, you know, yeah, uh, over sure. like re- as of late. But it's like I mean, oh, for me personally, like I, those those type of experiences were just like you know, I, I'm still I'm a terrible online shopper, you know, and I'm sure that there's, you know, it probably reflects on our website where it's like, our website is beautiful, but a lot of people have I was some say problem. The site's really good. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of people will be like, why don't you have this? And this is that, that, that. And it's like, oh, I don't, cause I don't think about that. Like I'm just looking yeah. at like, just trying to kind of make up a, a, the best I can to make a portal into the world of older brother, you know, but having retail stores now, therein lies the opportunity to really bring people into a, like a physical world of that. And that's been very cool. Hard. Especially, very cool. yeah, especially when I think brands now more than ever, and this is, I think, a huge benefit of, mm. you know, of Instagram and social media is like, yeah, that's cool. I get that you make these great products mm. and you design with convictions and mm. this is really special and important and near and dear to your heart. But mm. I crave, and maybe this is rude of me, Uh but like I definitely crave a almost interpersonal relationship with a brand. Like, Uh okay, what are the other things that fit in your world? Like, what's the lamp in your room? Do you use an alarm clock? Uh Do you, you know, are you into a sonic care? Like, like what are all the other things that I know that these brands and the representatives of these brands have to interact with? Uh Um, that also shape that brand. And I feel like it's such an amazing opportunity now for brands to also push things that are in that world that people just want to be adjacent to you know, and understand and connect deeper. You know, it's funny you say that. And I was talking about the, about the Christina Kim at the yeah. Tulsa studio visits. Yeah. You know, one of the most lasting things was from that studio visit for me. Yeah. Drinking iced barley tea. There you go. Yeah, I literally walked See? in there and that they have got this just beautiful little kind of like minimalistic kitchen and like, do you want some iced barley tea? And I was like, I've never had iced barley tea. Sure. It's delightful. I still like I crave it to this day. Hospitality yeah. 101, man. Yeah. That's all I it mean, takes. <laughs> look, look, I mean, I I, I have uh, the brand older brother has some serious deficits to that because it's really it's I mean, you gotta be. Do you got a barley tea game at the, at the showroom in the shop? What? No, no, no. It's been, I mean, the shop's been, I mean, to, 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 to consist constantly evolve that mm-hmm. as an undertaking itself is like, sure. is, is strenuous. So, you know, that, that, that the, there still holds high aspiration of doing those things. Um, and that those are the aspirations. I'd love to make sure that there was, that there was some like, like real uh, refreshing iced barley tea or uh, you know, in the past, I remember when we um, 
when we were working with Saffron um, in 2018, we made uh, cold infused saffron water for the first month, which is like really good. Very, a very distinct cold infused water. But yeah, it's been there. The intention is there. Have well, we yeah, delivered it? Thing. Have we delivered it to all the customers? No. Where are, are we going to? Yes. Uh, uh, that's those are the aspirations going forward. Yeah, I mean that's it's great to have those, and I think it's tough too because to walk that line also does ask a lot of your, you know, your your clients in the sense, you know, because I have a friend of mine, they work in the industry, and for them, speed is the most important thing, and I think. It's tough to take their opinion, the weight of their opinion, because they're so submerged in the industry. I also would say that they're jaded. Um, but like, I mean, I, I myself am convicted of that. But like, you know, for some people, it's like, yeah, I want to come in. I want to pick up what I ordered and I want to leave. And I want to be able to return this easily if I need to. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And, and also, I never want to hear from you. Don't email me. Right. You know, may, tell me if you get something no, if you get something new, but like, don't hear from me. And then you have other brands that are like, Come over here. Let us wash your hands. Take this thing to drink. Smell the scent. And yeah. you're like, I just, I got to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's tough to like, to discern the level of relationship that someone wants to have with a brand Yeah, on like the first impression. Well, you know, what's funny is, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time standing in front of a rack of older brother clothes and like understanding this initial, like starting conversation about the brand. Mm-hmm. Some people just don't give a shit. They're like, eh, "This like yellow button down shirt is is great." And it's like, so, yeah, like, is that good or bad? I, I mean, that's I wrestle with that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I I I mean, I just think everyone's got their own preference, and you know, you, you I think for me, uh, you know, for me as somebody who's like taking ownership of the product and the experience and stuff like that, there'd be some people that are like. Yeah, what's it? What's this all about? Why does it cost this much? And it's like, oh, you know, it's like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, and then it's like, oh, pfft. and then like throw it back on the rack. It's like, all right, well, oh, hey, you know what? Whatever. You know what I mean? That's your, that's your interaction. And I get it. You know what I mean? Some people are not going to be moved by that. And then some yeah. people, some people are like, tell me everything. And it's like, dude, I got to go. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I, you know, wait, wait, you're not going to buy this. I've talked to you for two oh, hours, yeah, bro. That, oh yeah. That, yeah. That sometimes in the past too, it's been like, wait, are you a spy? Are you a spy for another brand? Like looking for stuff. And which is also very, they do exist. Right. Oh, I, they a hundred percent exist. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's so funny. There's so many people that will be, I'll be like, I'll be in conversation with them and be like, I'll be chatting with them, but like, oh, you have a store in Venice, and it's like, yeah, yeah. And then one of the people that works for me, be like, I saw him in there like three weeks ago. He was checking everything out. <laughs> Good God! And you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right, right on. Uh, but you know, it's <clears throat> I don't know, like people's interactions and stuff like that. I, I, I honestly, I, I really want to be able to do my best to make sure that we're kind of like right there to meet people where their needs are. And that stuff is, it's, that is like next level uh, ownership and leadership of a company, which I strive to do. But it's like, I mean, that is an art in itself, you know, that's the highest calling. I agree. And so it's like, I I think it's meaningful when it is. And then there's like that fine line of like, well, okay. Like, what did I step into? Like there's, um, there's some places where I'll go and the people are just, I mean, it's like, you know, if you're not there for an hour to talk shop, it's like offensive and that, yeah. and being on the, re- being on the receiving side of that, it can be like, well, okay. Like, I, I don't know if I have the time to come by your store today, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's true, especially as you develop a relationship with that person, you know, and like, there are stores that I, in New York, that I would be like, oh, that'd be, oh, we could pop in there. And I'm like, ooh, yeah. you know what? We don't have the time. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to tell me about their life story, you know? And then I'll get a text later. And it's like, hey, I saw you walk by, oh. you know, like, is it, how are things? And you're just like, damn it. Like, I, I didn't even go in. And now I'm trying to have this conversation. <laughs> I, I, and I have, I have a dual, I have dual sides to that too. Where I, I can be a recluse sometimes and avoid, people avoid it. And that, yeah, that is meaningful too. Where you're like, oh, I, don't, I don't know, man, not today. So but, as as like the the brands, you know, evolved more, you know, I feel like the the visuals of your guys's lookbooks mm-hmm. are like incredible. Thank you. And and I know like I I you know the the lookbooks didn't just you know change overnight. They've it's always kind of been there. 
but it's I think the way that you like put together these looks mm. and the environments that you put them in are extremely like appealing and exciting. So I'm kind of curious, like, is there was there a certain mindset in making some of these lookbooks, or yeah. is it just kind of like straight off the dome? No, I mean everything. Like so far, I think like I said initially, like starting older brother. The whole idea was it's like, okay, can, you know, can we make clothes this way? Yes. And then the yes part's been checked for quite some time now. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? And mm-hmm. now, you know, I, like I said, it's kind of like, it's become a vehicle uh, to explore concepts and exploring those concepts means holistically where the, you know, whatever the process of the season is, uh, how that's conveyed, how that can be used in a physical space how that relates to an overarching narrative of like materiality that I find interesting and packaging those things together, like the whole, the, every aspect of it, you know what I mean? Like if we're going, uh, they're all, they're all derived from experiences. Like we did spring 20, um, uh, the year prior, uh, I was Mm -hmm. up in the Bay area, uh, walking down a beach in Point Reyes and I met a guy who was making a sculpture out of bull kelp with driftwood. Just, just this like beautiful soul sitting on the, on one of my favorite beaches in the entire world with these like stormy waves coming crashing in. And he's mm-hmm. sitting there twisting driftwood together with bull kelp. And I went, Whoa. And I went over and talked to him and he's like, yeah, that's how I do it. And he's making these beautiful driftwood sculptures. And I just had like a short interaction with him. I said, have a great, happy new year. And was walking down the beach and I came back and he had left the sculpture on the hood of my car. And I was like, oh shit. Yeah. I was, it was very small. It was like, you know, it was like two, two feet by two feet, but it was like these little twiggy pieces of driftwood with really meticulously tied bull kelp. Um, mm-hmm. that he had put in like a little bit of oil so it would like cure and dry. This, oh, wow. This is beautiful. And I drove off and I was like, fuck me. And, and <laughs> I, well, and I just like, I just got hit with that idea. I was like, man, I was like, kill. And, and then I started to think about, I was like, oh yeah, well, like, ho- like as a material, kelp is, I mean, algae, the, that whole, I knew at that moment in time, I was like, wow, this is a vast reservoir of beauty, solution, Mm -hmm. experience that is so vast that it's like all we have to do is like dip our toe and start to figure this out. And I knew the minute I drove off of that sculpture, I was like, I know that you can use you can use algae as color. I know that you can use it as packaging. I know that you can use it as food and blah, blah, blah. Like you get charged up with that and you're like, man, I can get behind the use of algae as a narrative, as a visual, as a story. Mm. And then it's done. That's it. You go and you just start, and I'll just start digging those things out as much as I can, as far as I can in that condensed period of time, which is, it's fucking, it's like six months. You know what I mean? You get to kind of like execute that stuff. So it's like, uh, though that's just a that's just a recollection of a very short period of time where I was walking on a beach and I got introduced into like working with seaweed and algae and what driftwood and, and like that yeah. stuff just integrated in where I went man like this is that's perfect you know our our newest collection the pollination stuff I was yeah I was uh uh running on the beach and I stepped on a bee what <laughs> yeah. Did you get stung? Yeah. Shit. And I, it's like, it's interesting. It's kind of like a, a, it's like a, I, ha, I, when I was growing up in Oregon, uh, up, we, there was a, uh, apple orchard that we went to when we were kids. And I, when I, when my brother and I were younger, he hoisted me up in the tree cause we were collecting little, uh, like abandoned bird's nests for an art project my mom was doing. And he hoisted me into a hornet's nest and I got stung like, 10 times uh oh my yeah God. And I, it was like i had like a like not that's like a my girl situation man right and so i had like <laughs> a pretty crazy reaction so like i had this weird where when i was a kid i was scared of bees and like then i stepped on that bee on the beach and i was like same thing i was like holy shit it was like pollen like i've i've been having i've the one of the things that's happened to me over the last couple of years is i've become possessed 
with Southern California plants and like the native landscape. And so I've been having this like crazy, like I'm, I'm like manically working in my backyard, trying to put in like different sage varieties. And, and so like that, that that's just where I was. And I stepped on a bean. I was like, Holy shit. I was like, pollen, we can start working with pollen right away. Pollen, wax, propolis, like all these things. These are all elements that there um, there's the list of pros is just so significant where it's like as a food nutrient, alternative materials you know what i mean like it just goes and so those are the things where it's it's starting to string those things together and and really trying to look at the intention you know what i mean it's like can it check all those boxes you know what i mean right can can it you know what i mean and if if these subject matters can then i'm then i go uh, i'm all in you know what i mean it's like i want to do my best to kind of like extrapolate these things and insert them in the vehicle older brother and put them out there so it's like so when people interact with this stuff, they go, huh? And they have like, what, like if somebody like last winter, we were working with fermentation processes and SCOBY mm-hmm. is an element within that. And SCOBY provides this. It's like a fantastic alternative to many things. SCOBY leather, blah, blah, like, uh, you know, we built a dome out of it in our store, you know, yeah, as, yeah. Uh, with the intention of showing people like this, this stuff, you know, these like natural systems are vast. They're beautiful and it's compelling stuff. So we go in there to start to kind of like explore, be like, what, what's next? If it was, if we were doing these things on a billion dollar global scale, like, like a Nike or something like that, I mean, shit, you can produce amazing things. Well, that's what I was going to say is like, do you feel that you like maybe have like a higher calling outside of the brand or do you feel the brand's going to do that for you? Because, you know, just, just your thought process of, design and just approach to nature i think goes significantly larger than the impact of you know clothing manufacturing that's very kind of you to say that um you know i don't know i have no idea you know what i mean it's like that's fair that's okay to tell you the truth i would love nothing more than for older brother to be and that's i mean that's the thing that's occurred over time is is that we've been able to do more because things, mm-hmm. you know, things have grown, opportunities, experience, financial resources, like all these things. That's good. Accumulatively, that th- th- all those things come in and, and it's uh, the ability to execute more. I mean, it's like, mm-hmm. shit, like, let's get a, let's get a, uh, you know, let's get a bio lab going and I'm going to do some <laughs> wild stuff. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're in, <laughs> we're with pots and pans and some consultants here and there, but I mean. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, that. You know, I think that that all comes down to you know, innovation, and mm-hmm. I, I I find that stuff where it's like, you know, across all boards. You know, I think um, sometimes it's it's daunting, and sometimes I'm I've, sometimes I feel like, oh, okay, well, that's already been done before, and then I go, well, wait a second, but there's way more stuff to do within that context. You know, it's like we've been covering, I've taken the brand to cover a lot of ground in the last couple of years, and now I'm like coming back to it. It's like, okay, there's more to say here. You know, a lot of people, you know, it's like in 2018, you know, I, I was really on, uh, I was, yeah, 2000, mm-hmm. 2000, winter 2018 was, was the first, like, I went deep into mushrooms. Like, you know what like I mean? chaga sort and of? Or like, mushrooms. okay. Yeah. Well, but I mean, chaga just, uh, chaga just circumstantially just came to be the mm-hmm. mushroom that had the highest right. tannin. To produce a color there there was a lot of other stuff in 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 uh in development with that but all all everything aside that just worked so it was okay and take it and run with it and then use mm. that to to highlight what's going on in the world of fungi and that stuff is like it's just amazing and now you see it's like there you could you can see it as all these companies when i first were reaching out to them were like uh, they were obscure. It was like one guy who had like a a leather, a mushroom right. leather innovation thing. And now I read that it's like, you know, uh, Stella McCartney and Air Man. And all exactly. And That's like, what I was going to say. It is very right. much, you know. Prevalent. Yeah. yeah. No, not only that. It's like people use mushrooms as like a thumbs up in text messages now. What? I mean. I mean, I yeah, believe you. But yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe maybe that's more of like some crunchy people that I'm 
happily exchanging messages with, but I see it all the time. I see like, like 16 year old kids with their like Instagram handle and it's like something, something. And it's like mushroom sign. And it's like, what? I was like, fucking it. Cool. You know what I mean? I got that. That kind of stuff is, is, is wild. Come a long way from, from flip skateboard mushrooms. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, you know, those, those things, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like that that innovation. It's the same thing, you know. It's like I, 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 as I, for as much momentum as I can use to go down those roads, and yeah, it's a, a lot of stuff gets left on the table just due to mm. financial constrictions, time restrictions, and resources. You know, so the the bigger the company gets, the more we're going to try and do with those things. And what's and, what's the size of you guys now? I mean, how big is the company now? So we've got uh, three people uh, in house on like the office side doing the execution of stuff. To, you know, um, we've got uh, currently now I have uh, John Crony, who's like uh, you know number two, get shit done, and we've got another gentleman named uh, uh, Beto, and so and then we also have our own factory that we're using right here so we have seven sewers okay. um, and then uh, we have one sometimes two people working with me in the die house too so in, in total that's what 12 employees that's awesome and do you spend most of your time in the die house yeah i'm, I'm it's like kind of uh, that's like my much my my realm is in there trying to you know um trying to figure out how to make this shit happen you're gonna make some some mouse pads anytime soon. Uh, hey, <laughs> what do you want to do with man? Do you want to do, do you want to do SCOBY leather? Do you yeah. want to do, do you want to do it out of uh, We're coming like full a, circle, man? Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> do we want to make some mouse pads? Fuck. Yeah. Let's make some mouse pads. Let's make them out of some wild stuff. Yeah. You know, let's, let's, let's do, uh, you know, uh, bulk help, stitched together at you know uh, some of this stuff is getting a little wild though it's start i'm starting to kind of feel like buffalo bill when people <laughs> come over because they're like what is this like human skin and i'm like no i don't know if this is i don't know if like the materials that we're using are starting to feel kind of fleshy and alive people are starting oh, to look at me a little yeah a little wild like it's a, it puts the lotion in the basket vibe <laughs> here right now but it's all it's all plant stuff uh so yeah i think um i think that that innovation and, and where we are right now it's like i think um there's a lot to do there's a lot to say um and you know the goal is to just get better at doing these things you know and it's yeah. it's it's hard i mean you know all that stuff is so challenging and there's sacrifices made at every level you know what I mean? There is right. not somebody right now serving barley tea at our store. I can guarantee <laughs> that. That's you know? all right. I mean, it's, you, know. you know, the fact, I, I think in most <clears throat> cases, it's being more important to see where you can sort of improve than to just basically like build this sort of like tower of arrogance. Because I feel like there are a yeah. lot of brands that actually wow. have earned it, right? Right, right. But, <laughs> Did but, you, <laughs> tower of arrogance, that is us. Uh, very poetic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I read a lot of old books. <laughs> I, I love that. That's, I like that. But yeah, I mean, it's, I, I am often more humbled by brands that, and, and any, anyone that is, is, is trying to, you know, lead or run any company with humility, you know? And right. I, cause I, I think for me and a lot of people more than ever pre pandemic and, you know, and r where we are now that, mm -hmm people want to have such a deeper relationship with brands, specifically brands that make very artisanal, beautiful things. I have mm -hmm. no desire to have a deep relationship with my laundry detergent. Maybe I should, right? right? Who right. knows? Um, but, you know, the stuff that's the most near and dear to my heart are the right. things that are literally on my body right. my entire life. <laughs> right. 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 So it's, Yeah. I don't know. I, I think about that a lot. Yeah, and I and I and I think it 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 can scratch that kind of itch and mm -hmm. like fills those ex that experiential stuff, which I transcends. You know, hey, let's just put on some good looking clothes. You know what I mean? Like that's that's well and good, but it's like, can you go into that and can you interact with these things 
and pick up on more of an intrinsic value. Like, oh, okay. Like, what is what is this getting at? Right. You know what I mean? And and I think that that the, you know the ability to deliver that in any capacity is is why we do, you know do what we do. Right. You know, I, I think like that that could be extreme, extremely meaningful. You know, for for all parties that care to enjoy it that way. Yeah. Or not. You know, if people want to look sharp, I'm I'm all about it. You know, <laughs> definitely, definitely kind of throwing out that like uh, landscaper vibe right now in terms of like our cuts and silhouettes. But Garden Boy, yeah, yeah. I'm into so it. I, hey, I, you know, but the reality is, is like that. I mean, that's just where I'm at right now. You know what I mean? It's like mentally, I ain't, like I'm like crazy possessed <laughs> with going out into my garden right now, where it's like, what, what are you, what are you growing? Well, I mean, dude, we're growing a lot. Like I told you, we got, uh, I have, uh, I have a list of a 50 mile radius, which has all of the different coastal California plant species that are from our backyard. So Whoa. I've been going back and trying to So this to isn't just like some, some random heirloom tomatoes that you're, you're well, going to go, that, um, that we're working on our veggies because we <laughs> I have a, I have a one year old and that has been like very fun to like be in the backyard and do all that. Oh, that's awesome. But then, but then there's me who I get cooked out. You know what I mean? It's like, if I get, if I get a download about like, Oh wow. It's like these, you know, uh, it's like one of those things where uh, now I'm this like actively trying to restore the habitat, the original habitat, in my backyard. And uh, it's painful because I'm obsessed with it. I'll go on to like there's uh, a website called Calscape, which documents all the plants. And I go online at night and read about different plants that like hummingbirds enjoy to, you know, eat or like hell yeah. Fuchsia. And so that's just one of those things. It's, it's just it's like got me right now like it's it's shocking like you know it's basically you know it's it's starting to go into that threshold of like i have to i have to calm down about it a little bit because i can get kind of manic and <laughs> single focus about those kind of things where it's like dude nobody like gives a shit you know what I mean? like you say like right now it's like dude i'm trying to talk to you about like sage plants in california and you're like oh. you know it's like i could get i can get kooky about that stuff and like start categorizing it and learning about it and knowing you know i just get those type of things are meaningful like to me and that you know and that's what's why you know it's like that's kind of what we're serving at ob right now because that's what's on the skillet (laughs) you know it's like it's it's really no i mean i think that's that's awesome um this conversation has been phenomenal so I, i can't thank you enough but yeah this is a series of random questions, but these are just kind of right off the dome. Um, if you were making a YouTube how-to video, what would the subject be? Chaparral, native plants. Hell yeah. Okay. That's basically all of my YouTube history right now is that. Love so it. I think, I, I think I, I'm going to do my own garden video. Um, what is the last movie you saw? Apocalypse Now. Wow. Heavy. Right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, what is um the last album you heard, or what would you say would be an album that is being that you're playing at the Heavy Brothers? Rotation? Yeah, I don't know if I can disclose that. Oh, so you are a Portland guy? Yeah, I mean, I mean, ah, uh, there's some. If stuff you tell going somebody on. music, you just revealed part of your soul. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that. What are on very, the Grados, my man? Yeah, that is very wild. I mean. Dude, we're talking. We're talking like there's a there's we've got. Uh, I guess I'm subjecting the kind people that I work with to like mid '90s drum and bass from the UK. And, yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, love that stuff. Um, uh, a ton, a ton of dub reggae, and then also you know I'm very 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 much into going into the old uh road tapes of the grateful dead so i have that and then just a a kiss of uh some thrash metal too just to kind of oh, get wow. the, just to just to get the blood flowing a little bit in the very very well rounded yeah. um yeah uh, so what, i can't say one album i'd what's your take on dead and co then are you pro dead and co or 
Jerry or bust? I understand both. I started as Jerry as bust. Now I'm just, um, I'm happy to go. I I will be there. Um, you know, I think that's it. I, I'm losing. Uh, I'm trying to be less stubborn in my in my mm. in my real adulthood. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Because I, I, I mean, quite frankly, like I, you know, I'm I'm trying to be open to about those things. And there's a few people that are just like absolutely not. And I thought so too. Do they have kids? Because I think parenthood is what softens the heart, man. Yes, that that <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, they do have kids, but they oh. they are full. A uh, fish, and uh, that is not necessarily my bag. I can't go all the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a fish head. Yeah. Um, Which is on. That's that's fantastic. Um, so one of my, I used to work for the beggars group for a super long time, mm-hmm. and one of my like really close friends, this guy named Patrick Amory, he's one of the co heads of Matador Records. Uh, there is a service called Mixcloud. Mm-hmm which I'm not a big fan of because I want to like buy the wax or own the music or whatever. Right. But um, Patrick Amory runs this sort of like from the waxidermy days, which was like mm-hmm. the, you know, wax collecting message board in mm-hmm. Mixcloud. He, what he does is he, every week he makes a playlist mm-hmm. um, or like a custom mis- mixtape from mm-hmm. all of these records that he has. And the mixes are fucking incredible. Yeah. Like he, they're so, so good. Like he has some like really beautiful classical piano stuff. He's got a lot of like rare, like, you know, West African jazz and stuff. And it has opened me up to music discovery more than ever. The only downside is it's basically music that is like twice its age, you know, right. or it's just like when people ask me about new music and they're telling me about whatever band, I'm just like, I don't know, man. Whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Same here. I mean, yeah, I'm. I mean, I can see a lot of grays starting to come through in the camera right now. But <laughs> yeah, a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on where I'm just like, whoa, you know. And 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 I think sometimes too, like that speaks to like you know, some people are just kind of diggers in that sense, where it's like mm. if there's some if there's something that's on. I mean, I would primarily listen to a lot of my music on YouTube, and you can go, you can go. Interesting. Yeah, you can. D D. And you can find stuff where you're just like, oh, like live recordings, different mm-hmm. concerts, different eras, you know what I mean? Of like where, you know, where there's like, so there's like experience where you're like obsessively like, oh, okay. Like uh, there's this band performing in, you know, this time period after this album and this is right. what sound, And it's like, it has so much more body to it. And you're like, wow, like I can, I can go down that road for sure. But yeah. do I, do I, can I, you know, can I keep up with what's out there? You know, no, I'm terrible. I have no yeah, idea. Same. I, I, you know, all I can do is go back and, you know, just dig out the, those things that like get me. And yeah. that, and that's, that's one of the best things too. It's like the, you know, now with all this information everywhere, it's like, you can go down these vast wormholes and like really like s- sift through the stuff to find your, your grail where you're like, ah, this is, it. Yeah. this is the one. <laughs> this is the one. Um, all right, last question. What is a movie or a book that when someone mentions you feel they understand you? Or an album? I think as of I think one of the movies that really stood out to me in the last like ten years that I that I spent a lot of time rewatching and just found like so beautiful but also insane and kind of disturbing was uh Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master. Whoa. So that is not one of the most you know, widely loved PTA films. Right. For me personally, like there's a few people I know who will like reference or throw that out and I'll go, what? Did you watch that movie? And many times I watch that movie. Did you, you know, that one, is, you know, just off the top of my head, that was one of the ones where I was like, okay, you're, you have to be like mildly tortured to really appreciate that movie. Yeah. And to find the beauty in it. You know what I mean? And that the, the humor in it. I think uh, I'll put that one on the table. Damn. Uh, not, okay. Not, not not to try and like pull some deep card or, I mean, that's just, that's one of those ones that I, I have an ongoing text thread back and forth that frequently cites different scenes in that movie that I can relate to at different times, especially wow. referring to, you know, living life or, or being an entrepreneur. 
some, there's some relevant content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is like a, a last sort of, you know, unrelated, but like, what is a thing you wish you knew more about like running a clothing brand that you, that you weren't prepared for when you, when you started older brother? I think, um, there's, that's like a whole manual that I could a lot, a lot. <laughs> cool. Well, Max, this was, it was, it was an honor and a pleasure to chat with you. I yeah, thoroughly you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It, it was great chatting with you. Yeah, true. All right. See you, man. You've been listening to Blamo. If you like what you heard, you know the drill. Share the pod with a friend, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, do all the deals that you do when you like stuff. Follow us on Instagram for all the hot content. And if you want to talk to us and give us your hot take, we'd love to hear from you. Scroll down and our phone number is in the show notes. Leave us a message. We'll put it in a future episode or email us at info at blamopod.com. If you want to hang with us and join the Blam fam, visit patreon.com forward slash Blamo, where we have a ton of exclusive episodes, including exclusive shows now. Hello, Derek Guy and Triple J Show and our amazing Slack community. All right, folks, have a great weekend. See ya.